Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I am a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer. And this is a video about the Gemini Full Moon 2019 occurring on December 12th at 1212 12 a.m. if you are on the eastern seaboard of the United States. For your time zone, please Google for the correct time where you live. All right, this full moon is an interesting one, primarily because the predominant energy signature has to do with uh, the full moon and a conversation with a conjunction between Venus and Saturn that astrologers call uh, an inconjunct. When two planetary energies are 150 degrees apart, um, we call that an in conjunction. And it's one of the more complex and richer astrological aspects that we can experience. With the in conjunction, the energy of an in conjunction is an energy where two things don't speak the same language. They don't want the same outcomes. They aren't moving in the same direction. And so in order to create um, a forward step or forward movement, we have to, working with this energy, either make choices or create a third way that in some ways leaves one or the other way out for now. The other interesting energy here coming into this full moon is a bit of a T-square between the moon and the sun and uh, Neptune at this time. And this T-square brings with it a lot of energy um, that can be confusing. Normally T-squares, as one of my astrology teachers, Nadia Shaw says, create motivation. But when Neptune's involved, sitting between our instincts, the sun and our needs, the moon, Neptune being dissolving, it can just feel like things are a bit hard to grasp, difficult to understand, tricky to pin down. Like there's just a lot more uncertainty in the air with this T square and this in conjunct energy. Overall, um, my sense is that many will find this a moment where energies are up in the air. Energies are up in the air but not in the way that they would have been earlier this year. Um, in June, July, May, June, and July, this energy is up in the air in a way that has us feel a bit torn between two great choices or torn uh, between um, you know, two parts of ourselves or two things that we feel like we need to have. So... This full moon in Gemini has the moon sitting in the sign of Gemini, which is all about communication. Gemini being also about uh, the mind and the way we're thinking about our challenges, wanting to really talk through things and get to the, you know, kind of explore them, um, explore where things sit and where they stand, look at all sides of things. Whereas the energy in Capricorn, which is where the inconjunct planets sit down here at 19 and 20 degrees Capricorn, we have Saturn and Venus sitting together. Capricorn is all about um, work, work ethic, nose to the grindstone, put your head down, get it done. Why are we talking? It's not talking time, it's working time. Whereas Gemini wants to say, whoa, 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 why are we working? We haven't even solved for all of the variables yet. And so with the moon sitting in Gemini completing a cycle, because full moons can represent culminations or completions, um, you know, with the moon in Gemini, there is this kind of like illumination about all the things that we have discussed prior to this point while and wanting to kind of maybe review some of those things 
while simultaneously this Venus Saturn energy in Capricorn is going, we've talked about this enough. Why are we still discussing this? Can we please move on and get things done? And you may find that this is happening, you know, I'm not really sure what area of your life this could be happening in um, because it's really going to be contingent upon the house placements that you're feeling this tension. Um, But for example, if there is, you know, a first house, eighth house placement or an almost first house, seventh house or 12th house, sixth house, there could be something around the world of relationships where, there's just an inconvenience where on the one hand you find you need to be or do elsewhere. You're taken away from something you wanted to keep building because something else needs your attention. It's a, it's a period of time where we're a bit forced in one direction or another, because there can be a lot of compartmentalization within conjunctions where you know, the two things can't coexist in the same place at the same time in our world. So it can be a bit with this Neptune T-square as well. This time can also be quite confusing. It can feel like the right solutions are elusive or they aren't here yet. And it can lend itself to feeling like there's a bit of a pregnant pause in the air, um, a bit of a moment where thoughtful reflection might be needed before taking a step forward. So um, the inconvenience of this uh, wanes as we get further along into Jupiter's transit through Capricorn. Uh, The inconvenience of this starts to become opportunity as the moon moves past this particular location. Uh, But it is significant that Uh, this moon is having this conversation at this time because you may notice in your outer world um, that there's a little bit of polarization going on and it's almost like people are in two different, not just opposite one another, but in two different dimensions, like not even having the same conversation. And in order to be one part of one conversation, you actually have to abandon the other conversations. yeah, it's a very confusing and non-clear energy um, in certain ways. And in other ways, um, it's also a very practical energy where, whereby if you, know, you are taking the steps to focus on the things that you've committed to building um, and you stay loyal and true to the curveballs that are coming up, not to the curveballs, but through And despite the curveballs that are coming up at this time, you stay true to the path that you've been carving out and moving along as you move forward, you will find that reward comes in due time. So some of the other, let's get into this Venus conjunct Saturn here because this is one of the key signatures of this full moon with Venus talking to Saturn here in Capricorn at 19 and 20 degrees in the bottom of your chart. You can see me waving my cursor around. Um, And Venus and Pluto and Saturn are all speaking together right now. And this is partly what makes things more than a little bit inconvenient. Um, With Venus and Saturn having a conversation, first of all, this Saturn-Pluto coming together is one of the core energetic signatures that we are going to feel uh, this month, December, January, and February of next year. They move quite slow. They bring significant change. Venus moves quite a bit faster than these two, but she's traversing a path that Jupiter and then Mercury will walk later, but Jupiter being the most significant of those. Saturn in classic classic mythology uh, represents the Lord of Order in time and the harsh teacher is what he's known as. You know, Saturn has been demonstrated in mythology when, uh, as the one who, you know, when Gaia said, you know, my lover that I created 
Oranos is trying to push our babies back into me and harming me and harming my children, Saturn was the one who came to her aid and said, how can I help you fix this? And Gaia said, I want you to castrate Oranos. When, you know, Saturn did that, Saturn then came to have the representation of teaching harsh lessons via separation as well, or needed lessons via separation. Um, after that moment, you know, Orono separated from the earth and now the heavens live far, far away from the earth instead of being tightly wrapped around the earth as, you know, Gaia and Oranos were lovers. The heavens separated. Saturn became known as the separator. Um, but when I see this story as well, Saturn is also the restorer of integrity via a separation. Saturn is also the one who creates Gaia coming back to her natural and whole state via creating that separation with the heavens, separation from the heavens. And so as Saturn did that, Saturn created this opportunity for things to be put back in right order for Gaia. And so if there is a separation in your world happening at this time as Venus and Saturn are having this conversation, either in the world of money and finance or your values, that's Venus, or in the world of love and relationship, romantic partnership, that's also classic territory that Venus governs. The reason why is because it is a time during which things are going to be put back in right order in due time. But this separation at this time was required in order for things to get put back in right order. And so you may find that that separation at this moment is more than a little bit inconvenient. Um, whereby, you know, like, oof. Did I really have to lose this job right now? <laughs> I was already trying to move. Um, you know, if Venus and, or sorry, if Gemini and Capricorn, uh, you know, are having conversations with your 10th house and your fourth house, 10th house being um, career, fame and honors, and fourth house being home. So, these are things you want to look at. If you're curious about how this is playing out in your chart, there are sessions available for the second half of December. They're very limited because of the holiday, um, and half of, more than half of them are already gone at this point. Um, you can email me at chrysalismoon at gmail.com. We'll see what we can do about making sure you get one of these limited spaces. K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com. Check your spam folder for the autoresponder. If you don't see it right away, it'll tell you how to book a session. And we can look at how to work with this energy as you move into you know, the next decade and specifically uh, 2020. Now, the other interesting thing about this is um, with this in conjunct and this conversation with Saturn and Venus, it's a little bit like, but the story's not done yet. Whatever is occurring right now by way of separation actually continues to unfold as a bit of a storyline as Venus then moves forward in the next week to have a conversation with Pluto. Pluto is the governor of alchemy and transformation, lord of the underworld, and change is how he's known. Um, it Pluto really is representative of that place that is neither life nor the afterlife, but it is that space in between. It is neither the caterpillar nor the butterfly, but it is that moment where inside the chrysalis, the entity is neither. It, Pluto really represents the transformational cycle that we move through and governs that transformational cycle that allows one thing to become another. 
Pluto also in mundane astrology can really represent uh, business. It can also represent money from others, taxes, loans, um, inheritances. And with Venus coming to talk to Pluto, you may find uh, just after having had a conversation with Saturn, some of you are experiencing a death and an inheritance. Others of you may be experiencing a work, uh, work, what is that called when you are excused from your job? I've been an entrepreneur for so long. <laughs> Not fired, but maybe you get a, it's a severance or a downsizing and then you get a severance package. Or even others of you, you know, school may be coming to an end, um, but then you find out that you have leftover money from your student loan that either needs to get spent or is available for your next semester or your next quarter. This can play out in so many different ways with this conversation of, you know, Saturn talking to Venus and then Venus going to talk to Pluto. Um, the big thing to remember is that whatever it is, it is whatever's happening right now is part of a much longer trajectory and storyline because Venus uh, is moving along the same path that Jupiter is going to begin to walk in the next 30 days. Jupiter, 30, 60, 90 days, Jupiter is going to then have a conversation with Saturn and then have a conversation with Pluto. Saturn and Pluto are going to have a deeper conversation. The conversation is already pretty deep, um, but it's going to get even more intense. Um, so just be on the lookout for signs that are happening now that will signal some of the things that will get straightened out and smoothed out in the months ahead. So in addition to this, there's also an energy here of Neptune speaking with uh, Neptune in Pisces, speaking with Mars here in Scorpio. What I love about this energy is that they are sitting together in both in water signs um, and in home signs. So they're strengthened this way. I believe, and normally when you look at this, Neptune's the stronger planet because Neptune is the outer planet. But Neptune is not the ancient ruler of Pisces. Jupiter is. So Neptune being the new, the modern day ruler of Pisces, but Mars being the ancient ruler of Scorpio, the one who's been the ruler of Scorpio from the beginning, we see Mars really dignified here. We see Mars in a place of great strength here. Um, we see Mars kind of doing its Mars best, Martian best, um, to bring uh, a lot of motivation, ambition, drive, focus, raw passion into these watery conversations. And so there's definitely a real desire internally for all of us to figure this out, whatever the it is in your life. Um, but there's a real desire to figure it out so that whatever the mistakes were from the past, whatever the um, patterns were of the past that did not serve us, with Scorpio's depth and capacity to deeply reflect and understand uh, very deep truths, and Neptune and Pisces' interest in spirituality and the unseen world, there's a real desire to go within and figure out how did we arrive where we are now and how do we allow this moment to be a stepping stone to the moments that we want to see in the future in spite of its complications, in spite of its inconvenience, in spite of the separation that may be at hand now, in spite of the compartmentalization of, I can't be here, but I also can't be there. They don't even exist in the same locations in my life or in my mind. How do I deep, take a deeper look at what's causing either the separation in myself or the separation in, that's in my life? Chances are, if you're a spiritual person, you probably are if you're listening to this channel, 
you are seeing a separation in your life that is just a mirror of a separation you're having within yourself. So this is a great time if you've been thinking about getting coaching, if you've been thinking about getting therapy um, or other kinds of support to take a deeper look at oneself, this is a wonderful time to start that process. Interesting signatures. What else do we have going on here? Um, yep, Neptune, Sun, T square. Things are kind of unknown. Right. So the other interesting thing about this is that this Mercury retrograde is over. The one that we just had in Scorpio. Mercury is now out of that hidden sign, that sign that's, you know, all about kind of secrets. Mercury, the mind communication, is now in the sign of Sagittarius, which is all about taking that truth that we found, searching the depths and exposing it to the light of the world and chasing after it as our highest ideal. With Mercury out of retrograde and out of the retrograde uh, window of, t of degrees and now in the sign of truth, What's interesting here is that there's a bit of a a light around, like it's almost like the lights got thrown on in our lives around some of the disarray, some of the separation energy that we ourselves need to be responsible for having created. The lights are on around uh, a lot of the you know, the ways in which we, the circumstances we find ourselves in now, we now kind of recognize how we got here. We may not have full solutions yet, but we definitely know what we want after that final Mercury retrograde of 2019 in the sign of Scorpio. We're clear about what we want. We may not know how to totally get there, but it's crystal uh, at this point. So that's an exciting energy to have, particularly because this, the, the three years of 2018, 2019, and 2020 in their Mercury retrograde seasons have been linked. 2018 was a year where we had grand water trines. A grand water trine is just simply you've got three different planets all in water signs making 120 degree angles to one another, speaking harmoniously. Grand water trines, grand earth, water, air, fire trines, they can all be very intense. And with the water trines in 2018, we saw a very deep emotional flooding energy come in that specifically for water signs would have found them overwhelmed emotionally by the circumstances in their life and not fully understanding that the flooding that was going on in 2018 was part of a divine download that got unpacked during the Mercury retrogrades of 2019. Remember, Mercury represents mind and all of the Mercury retrogrades in 2019 were in water signs. So the things that unfolded in 2018 that may have felt a bit emotionally overwhelming came to clarity in 2019 and will will have further clarity in 2020 as the Mercury retrogrades span all three of the water signs, but two of those Mercury retrogrades also touch two air signs, uh, Aquarius and... Gemini, I believe. No, nope, it's Aquarius and Libra um, during the Mercury retrograde seasons. And so re re remember that water is emotion, air is mind. And so you're going to see that the things that took place in 2018 have been on a steady build all the way through 2020 and coming into clarity. And this particular full moon in Gemini. 19 degrees Gemini. This particular full moon is part of how that clarity um, 
is coming into being and conscious awareness for us. Let me just double check. Gemini, right, 19 degrees. Okay. So, um, yeah, just checking those Mercury retrogrades for 2020. So this moment is a moment of kind of like a final puzzle piece. It's a moment of a final crystallization of where we want certain things to be moving in our lives. And this clarity is linked to the upcoming solar eclipse that will be happening on December 25th. If you, uh, it could be the 26th, depending upon where you are in the world. But that upcoming solar eclipse um, in the sign of Capricorn is allowing an entire culmination cycle um, around opportunities as it pertains to work, home, family, and relationship, um, and self. All of those things to start crystallizing into their 2020 path forward in the external world. So if you're curious how all of this plays out in your chart, definitely shoot me an email. We'll have a look at your chart. We'll look at where these eclipses are falling and what kind of things you need to know as you walk into 2020. As 2020 is a significant retrograde year, every single planet will be retrograde during the year. Um, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, and Juno will all go direct during or retrograde during 2020 um, in a back-to-back -back almost fashion and knowing exactly how, what that means for you uh, in your chart, in your, the realm of work, in the realm of relationship can really set you up to understand how to work with the energies over the course of the year. So K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com and check your spam box if you missed the autoresponder. We'll set you up with an appointment to have a look at your chart and what's coming up for you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I understand that this video, um, this full moon, is it's not cut and dry. It's not easily clear. It's full of energies that are a bit inconvenient. But if you can trust the process and know that it's still unfolding, uh, you will find for yourself that things will continue to unfold uh, in a way that is much to your liking in the weeks to come. Thank you so much.